This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave Stevens, your show host. We have some lively content and discussion going to happen today. And joining me today is Andrew, the security guy, and Hal, our network guy. Um, uh, <laughs> welcome, guys. It's great to have you aboard. Again. Good to be here. We're gonna Thanks, we're gonna Dave. we're gonna just tackle some topics right away that just like we, we're just gonna get all fired up. I know we are. The one that's firing me up though, we're just gonna jump right into um, what is it, Rod Rosenstein, the Deputy Attorney General of the United States. Ah, oh. right, right. So Tuesday he's giving a speech. Last Tuesday he's giving a speech in Maryland, and uh, apparently they're gonna start the full court press on breaking encryption in the United States for tech companies. So they want tech companies to either give them the keys to the kingdom or build in a back door to all their security systems so the government can come and look at all your data. What do you guys think about that? <laughs> What's the point of having encryption yeah, why do if, if it has a back door? We, we keep the bad guys out is their, their point. We keep the bad guys out of the data that we're storing places and data in transit. But then, uh, as we've seen with other federal organizations, like the Office of Professional Management, who does the DOD Personnel. Security, Personnel management, yeah. sorry. OPM. Uh, OPM. They leave all breached. my data, by the way. Yeah, well, if you go for security clearance, they know everything know. about you, right? Every last little detail, especially yes. top secret clearance. And, uh, and they got breached, so they released all their data. Equifax released all their data. So uh, we're supposed to trust the government to build in a backdoor to all of our encryption and then trust them not to get breached, because if they got breached, that secret's out, and now all the bad guys can now look at our data. And again, we're back to, what's the good we're encryption? Back. Why are we encrypting things? Yeah. Then, then there is no, no, no more encryption. So their, their argument is, uh, this is a law enforcement issue. We've got to look at what the bad guys are doing. But then, you know, it seems to me, and you tell me if I'm thinking about this right, it seems to me it comes down to just like snail mail, the post office, right? It, the government doesn't come on and open all our letters and open all our packages and look through all our mail, but this is equivalent. Yeah. We're sending email and they want to read it all. So if we encrypt our email and they're saying, no, we want to re read that email, but why don't they just go to the post office and rip it open all the letters? I'm of the opinion that they already do. <laughs> <laughs> just so we're clear. They just they just uh, X-ray it or something and, and no, not it? not our snail mail. Yeah, but they they could obviously. Yeah. Pre pre send pre package pre post, right? And so, but so a couple of things. If they want the encryption keys, we don't need to have a hard coded back door. They can just decrypt the information and read it, right? If they have the they keys, they don't need a way sure, in. Sure, they, sure. Because they're gonna. They can get in with right. standard protocols because they know the encryption, right? So we don't need to give them a back, because the back door is bad. We know that. We right. can't have hard-coded back doors in anything. But if we give them the keys, then isn't the same thing? Of course it is. Yeah. And they are, have not really demonstrated much of a track record for maintaining things like mm -hmm. that over time. You're so nice to say they haven't had a good track record. I just don't see <laughs> they, they, They've been complete failures it's, across it's, the board. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that hasn't been stolen, but there's a lot of things that have. That's true. We know this. Yeah. Now, we haven't heard about it. And we don't know. Some databases getting hacked. Yeah, and, and obviously we know when someone breaches something, especially government uh, agencies who are trying to get you know intel about each other. They don't just go in, get in today, and take your stuff today. They go in and hide and work their way laterally and so horizontally out to do the network. Persistent threat. Yeah, yeah. So they're they're waiting to sifting through, seeing what's valuable. Some of it's good. Some of it's from who the guy on the grassy knoll. Who gives a crap, right? He's already gone. Those are the worst. The APTs, advanced persistent yeah, threats, because they're there for a long time, and they might yeah. not get something today, but there might be something juicy tomorrow. And and that's the door to install other tools with, right? So the, to gain leverage on the networks, like you know, because how that's how he breaks in and he just stays there and he never leaves. That's I it. can't confirm that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so this is so. That's what I think about that. I think, I think that compelling us to give them something is ridiculous. I think they should hack it, figure it out themselves. Like, just just keep working on your quantum computers, and you can break all of our encryption <laughs> right, right. anyway. <laughs> right. They can afford quantum encryption and quantum computing, and we can't. Right. Right. So they should be able to beat us to the punch. I mean, I, I don't. I, don't, I now, think, yeah. and I think it might be their 
Who's this guy? Was he a senator or something? Rob Rosenstein? Yeah. He's the uh, deputy uh, attorney general yeah. of the United States. Well, what does he know about encryption? Anything? Uh, What's probably, your feeling? Absolutely nothing. Probably uh, a bureaucrat or I think legislator. The only thing they understand is that it's blocking them from investigations. Looking, investigations. Sure. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think that um, people need to be able to protect their information, right? That should be my choice to encrypt it or not, and right. my choice to let you read it or not. Uh, and if I'm a criminal, then I think the, the cops should be smart enough to break whatever I'm, I'm using to hide it, you know? So it goes back to the Apple iPhone right after the San Bernardino yeah. attack, right? I, my personal opinion it was the FBI was a whining bunch of crybabies. Like, go get better at your job. Stop I, asking us to break and, open. And someone our own did. Stuff. They ultimately found someone who broke it open for them. That's what I'm saying. I, I think breaking these technologies. And they made themselves look bad in the in the in yeah. the whole process, right? Yeah. Telling everybody we can't break this and having to hire an outside. And that, that being said, I would like them to shut down all the this uh, this child you know slavery, sex slave trade. I like this. I like them to get in there and break all stuff. But I I kind of think they are. I mean, a lot of these busts that happen, it seems like they're kind of in tour already and gathering information. So I'm I'm functioning from a position there, already in there. And and they're just, about they're, tour and the dark web. Yeah, and I, well, yeah. I think that they, all, these, all this encryption is broken is what I think. And so I, but I just think they want to keep acting like it's not. So they say, we want you to give it. That. That's, I think it's a big media stunt. I think they're already in there. They already know, and they can get to whatever they want to get to. They just yeah. don't no, it's until a good strategy. it's really critical. From a law enforcement perspective, yeah. that is a great strategy. Yeah. Don't let anyone know you're in. Mm -hmm. And that's the and best keep, spot, and right? Keep begging. knows you. Yeah, and just yeah. keep, keep, just keep begging. Like, oh, we really got to get this law. Da, yeah. da, da, da. But, you know, you're already there. That's a show. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. This this is a kind of a conspiracy theory that we're launching here. And uh, on our last show, I got a comment on YouTube, and I told you guys I was calling I was called a fear mongering shill. We're not fear mongering. <laughs> I'm telling you something. This is factual. Cybersecurity. You sh people shouldn't fear it. We know what to do, how to protect yourself to the level you can. Now, if you're a criminal, I hope you don't know how. That's what I say. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, I hope that they, they are broke. I mean, I, they can look at whatever I got. I'm not hiding anything. This is what freaks me out a lot about the privacy war, right? The privacy issue, which people are entitled to their privacy. Right. Um, and, you know, and you, you're you entitled to all your privacy all day and twice on Sunday until you're doing something wrong. And right. then I don't think you should have your privacy more personally. That's just me. So, you know, they come to me. They want some help hacking your ass because you're a criminal. I'm helping. I don't want to be big brother, but I want to be, you know, his little helper. <laughs> <laughs> for that kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like people, people trying to steal, people trying to steal state secrets, people trying to steal our technology, people trying to steal intellectual property from companies. You know, um, we have a right to try to protect ourselves from that stuff, right? Sure. But you know, private citizens, up to up to nothing at all, they. You know, the cops are going to come looking for you, man. They're busy. There's a bunch of bad guys out there. It's all a matter of uh, who's most important. To yeah, you. but that yeah. doesn't satisfy the privacy argument that this is based in, and I, and I understand that, right? Right, they know? want everything wide open. Yeah. To make it just completely. And so why encrypt it all then? We should just, you know, let's just make it wide open. I, I figure it already is. <laughs> well, it, it seems to me that if the law enforcement agency wants to break your stuff, they should get to be as good as the hackers that they're yeah. trying to protect you against. And they are. And and fight an, and fight a war with unequal terms. Yeah, you know, not not whine about hey, we need you know less encryption because that's just giving the bad guys yeah, tools we're, too. We're yeah. pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, you remember that little Stuxnet problem? Uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty good. Wait, for our audience who does not know what Stuxnet was, can you go over Stuxnet? That was an air gapped uh, attack, right? So developed to walk, because this stuff's not on the internet, right? What they attack, it doesn't okay, exist. Okay, describe air gap, air gap. So this is, this, we have, this is not, con the systems that they attack aren't connected to anything. I've got to somehow get my malware introduced into a system that's not connected to anything. So just think it's in a, its own little box somewhere, and somehow I got to get in that box. So what I do is I give a person something. A flash drive. To take in there, that's yeah. right. Walking a sneaker And net. they walked it right in there, as predictable, because humans are a problem, we right. know that. Right. And they know they're not supposed to do that, but somebody did it. I want to know what's on that flash they drive. They walked that virus, <laughs> they walked that malware right in there and infected that place, and in fact, tore it down. No, so that, was, awesome. that was uh, the attack on a, a nuclear plant. Yeah, Iranian, uh, uh, what do they call it? Um, Centrifuge. Centrifuge facility, so exactly, the, for enriching those, uranium. So. Those centrifuges operate on stepper motors, an electrical circuit, that have certain numbers of microscopic turns per cycle, 
and this virus apparently stepped that up quite a bit, so they spun. <laughs> I think it burned them all up. Burned them out. Yeah. Well, well, showing the operators that it was operating. Yeah, it looked yeah, normal. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, no alarm. How's that, right? But I'm going to spin you up at maximum and How's burn you that? out. Yeah. So and, and I'm just saying. Stuff. So Stuxnet, if they I want, think if we wanted to, we could. And I, I just uh, think if, if the attorney general, whoever his clown is, if he wants to be in there, he's already there. <laughs> is, so what he has to have, this is where there's, there's protection, right? Because the FBI, people like that that do these investigations, yeah. they got to go through some lawful processes to go investigate you, right? And that's so right. that's where, what he's trying to do is get around all that. Just have it evolve. He's just being lazy. They already can come in and look. So that speaks to the Trump administration, I think. Oh, you think? I, I do. I think the... They want it all. They want it right now, and they don't want to work for it. That's been the theme yeah, what's since he's been there. <laughs> well, the rest of us have to work out here. I mean, I, I hate to admit it, but that's most of America. Hat. We want it all. We're right, right now. We don't want to work for it. <laughs> we, we just ain't been raised right, or I mean, what? no, none of us have. <laughs> We're selfish. Uh, I know. What is it? The instant gratification people now. Oh, I see. Because yeah. of the yeah, we do. We do have access to a lot more than we've ever had, right? I mean, isn't it easy? Yeah, it's too we, easy. We talk about the how how everybody's so internet smart, right? You can go and because you read Wikipedia, now you know something. You really know you really know enough to be dangerous is really the issue. That's the case. Who, who does fifty pages of research? They just take the top link and go, Oh, this is must be what it is. They That's believe right. that stuff That's when right. they read it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So the person they call me a fear mongering shill, I guess um, my uh, statement to that person is Please get your news from something other than uh, Fox News, Facebook or rightnation.com and go out someplace else and, and see that there's a bigger world out there. I have no idea how you stumble across my video for um, you know, Think Tech Hawaii. It must have been that I put gun laws in the title. Great. Come on back sometime and have an intellectual discussion with me. I put a comment in your response uh, saying that I'd like to have some kind of a dialogue with you if you could uh, list your concerns. Other than that, uh, fear I can't take you seriously. Yeah, I mean, I mean name, name calling doesn't help. I mean, we're, we're all about solving the problem here. We're not trying to make people afraid of the problem. I agree. Especially when it comes to cybersecurity, right? There's... There's many, many, many things that you can do, and people need to just do them. This is what we find. People are like, oh, it's mysterious. No, it isn't. No. It's well-written, well-designed, how to go in there and start assessing yourself for vulnerabilities and how to protect yourself, and that's what we're about. We're about educating. We're about here to help. We're not trying to create fear. We were in fear mode like years ago. Now we're not afraid anymore. Now we know what to do. Now we're in the We've fight. We've crossed over. Yeah, yeah, we're in the game. We're in the fight right. now, and we're in the game. And it's, uh, I think, who was it that said it? It said it to you and I both. We were uh, somewhere, and they said, you know, cybersecurity, it's no longer a career. It's a crusade. Yeah. Yeah, you're on the front line, the vanguard of the assault, and you're fighting all the time. Because the moment you stop fighting, someone gets you. Yeah. That, that's just how it is. Yeah. And exactly. that's life. That's how it is now. And, you know, I, I, I love when people say, God, what have we come to that cybersecurity is such a big issue and our, our lives are so complicated? Well, if you go back any decade in the history of the world, there was always some horrible thing going on that you always had to watch out for. We had smallpox. We had polio. We had wars. We had, the wars before were far yeah. worse than the wars. Trade, we trade warfare. Yeah, <laughs> World War I, man. Oh, you go back to the Roman eras where, you know, oh, 400,000 yeah. people die in a single day. Whoa. Right? <laughs> How's that? And we, don't, we don't have that anymore. Well, we have nuclear weapons. Maybe that'll happen. Do you think that's going to well, happen? What happened once? There was, there was a couple of days there where, you know, uh, we were testing. Yeah. <laughs> but the technology worked. It, it did work. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We have a passion for, like, as you mentioned, cheaper, easier, faster, more value, blah, blah, blah. And technology delivers that to everybody. So yeah, they just get hungrier warfare. for more and more. Yeah. And what, what they did, and a lot of people don't realize, is we that's what the consumers asked for. That's what business built you, but they didn't build security into it. IT, we've had cybersecurity forever in the IT space. It was built into the spec, the IEEE -E -E specification for all these protocols, all this stuff. Security's in there. But when they it's built the webcams, the, they didn't add the that. The guys who designed it right, just right. didn't put it, just didn't bake it in because it was more expensive. And you, Mr. Consumer, wanted it cheaper. <laughs> That's right. We want it cheaper. We want it. We want it great. We want it right now. We want it great. We want, uh, you know, we're not so concerned about quality anymore. That's kind well, of. Like, especially security because you can't see it. They, they didn't know. Yeah. So, you know. But the UL's coming out with the standard now. 2900. I yeah. was just talking with him today, as a matter of fact. Underwriters, underwriters Laboratory. You guys going to get on that standard? There's a new standards development group. You guys should get on it. 
Stop. Okay. And I'll send you the link. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm up for it. For sure, because they, they need oh, academia. Yeah. They, need, they want academia. <laughs> we got nothing else to do. Yeah, right. We got nothing else on our plates. We're going to take a little break right now. I'm going to pay some bills. I know. We've done 14 minutes, but half the show's gone. We'll be right back. Until then, everybody, stay safe. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science. Guys, don't forget to check me out right here, The Prince of Investing. I'm your host, Prince Dykes. Each and every Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Hawaii time, I'm going to be right here. Stop by and hear from some of the best investment minds across the globe. And real estate, finances, stocks, hedge funds managers, all that great stuff. Thank you. Hey, aloha. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii. You're on the Cyber Underground with Professor Dave, Professor Howe, and, and me, Andrew, the security guy. <laughs> anyway, um, it's National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. It's also the governor proclaimed Hawaii Cybersecurity Awareness Month. We're giving classes all over town in the libraries and the malls. Uh, so if you don't, if you're worried about cybersecurity for your home systems or for your small business or whatever, you really don't know anything about it, and you want to come out, we've got some great advice that we're going to share with you. Things you can do about how to, to lock down your logons, how to keep clean your PCs, clean your machines, um, how, what kind of backups you ought to be doing, things like that. So uh, come on out and learn. Check out um, there's a website up at um, on the state of Hawaii website. Um, so go 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 just Google NC Sam nice National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. And uh, you'll find us and uh, sign up and come out and get learn how to learn how to live, how to stay safe online. I think that's the motto: stay safe online. That's right. So thank you. All right, guys, back to the episode here. Okay, so I think the website you're talking about is ohs.hawaii.gov forward slash cyber. See, that's why we have a professor here. Somebody uh, knows something. We, well, I just met with Reynolds yesterday. Good. So he's trying to recruit me for stuff. Yeah, we need, some, <laughs> we need more teachers. I'm going to Honoka. I hope you guys are ready for me out there Monday night. We're actually going to do, uh, our student club does pen tests for local companies out here. And awesome. We're, we're looking for volunteers from the DHS, the FBI, and the NSA to come out and mentor our Ooh. students during oh, the pen test. Nice. It's going to be big, a team oh. of maybe 30 students. Oh. And this, this, this company, Turn your stuff off, people. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> five, five different locations for this one company across the state, different islands. And uh, we're gonna, students that are cybersecurity qualified now, some of the CEH recipients, and mm -hmm. they're going to they're gonna participate. That's in certified this. ethical hacker. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm usually pretty good about that. Uh, there's also an event coming up on October 25th. Hal, you want to tell us about that? Hal. Uh, sure. At uh, Kapiani Community College, we're going to be having a, a Wet Wear Wednesday. Ooh. You know, what, what's Wet Wear Wednesday? Describe this to our audience. Well, it's, that might it, not it, know. it's kind of a, a networking slash social event for people in, in IT and students and professionals to just kind of get together and meet each other and share some information. We might have a couple of speakers, uh, showcase uh, some student some student projects. And yeah, some of the student projects that are going to be showcased are the uh, former pen tests that we've been doing awesome. with the student club. So they can awesome. show us the results of their last phishing email scams on certain companies, and they actually make some money for themselves. So how don't I be there? Hope you guys can join us. Yeah. October 25th, October 25th. 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., free parking, free food. And green spot. And, and no, <laughs> we're not allowed to have alcohol on campus. <laughs> Although I wish that's the could. after party. That's the after party, but we can't. Which is what you really want to get invited to. <laughs> that, well, that you drink too much green spot, you have that. What's that nerd argument? We always have Star Wars versus Star Trek. Oh. Oh, that's the kiss of death. Yeah, you lose all the girls at that time. Ah, oh, that's bad. <laughs> Let's talk about something else that's just right, a right, hot right, topic right, that's right. going to kill us. Uh, and this one, we're so passionate about this one. What's up with this thing called cyber insurance for companies? So companies want to sell you cyber insurance, and the, their premise is if you get breached, if you get hacked, we'll pay for something. But that's kind of ambiguous. And, the, and you, you were telling me the applications you fill out, completely uh, irresponsible, if you ask me. Yeah. Because if you do get breached, then the real questions come. Can you need to describe your experience so far? You've actually seen these applications from insurance companies to apply for, quote, unquote, cyber insurance. 
They don't like me very much. <laughs> you, well, you know what you're talking about. I, no, I, I, no, I know, I know what questions to ask. You know, and, and what I find is, so we, when we talk, we all talk about the the NIST, the cybersecurity framework. We talk about the control set that NIST developed, the 800-53, which is a set of technical controls, primarily, you know, 99% technical, about 1,700 of them in the whole 853, I think. Um, yeah, these are these are things that you need to go check to make sure you're doing it, and therefore you're secure for that rule. Yeah, for that for that particular Multi factor control. authentication. Sure. Uh, door know, locks it, that work that can be monitored and logged. Mm -hmm. uh, you have rotating backups. You have a security plan. Mm -hmm. These are things that are just common sense. Yeah, to a lot administrative of people. privileges. All these types of things are are controlled, right? And, and so how they're described, what what the control implementation that you have. Is it is it uh, monitored? Is it uh, automated? Do you report on it daily, weekly, monthly? Right. So there's a lot of uh, measurement that goes on there, and these applications for cyber insurance don't talk in that language. They keep it very, very generic, and so it's it's. I think most people that fill it out like they, they you know, do you have encryption? So, so they'll go yes, but that's not the appropriate way to question. The, the, the thing to do is to look at the control set and see how you've applied encryption to the types of data that you have. Is it level one, level two, level three, according to the, uh, and this has the RMF, right, the risk management framework. So, you know, there's there's all these other. Well, let's tell people where you can get that information now. It's on the NSA, NSA, yeah. NSA website. On the NSA website. And or, or at the National Institute of Standards and Technology, mm -hmm. NIST. Right. Yep. Dot gov. Yep. And you can go there, and you can get the cybersecurity framework. All this stuff right? there. Uh, those all, are recommendations for all businesses. Some, even small business, even enterprise, small business. all of it. Eight hundred one seventy one for small businesses. So those out there. are small business uh, regulations. We're talking about NIST makes special publications, and they they code them eight hundred fifty three. Yes. Eight hundred one seventy one, and the one seventy one is for small businesses doing business with the federal yeah, government. Yeah. Isn't 800 the IT series, right? It's been, because there's 812 and right. the, all, all of those, right? There's, there's a lot of other stuff addressed in there, but it's, it's been around a long, long time. It's on Rev 4. We've had this stuff for Rev 5. Rev 5. Rev 5. It's on Rev 5. That's yeah, right. It's yeah. So, you know, so anyway, so this stuff's tried, it's tested, it's true. The, the, the best in the DOD, the best in the Fed, these guys, these are the rules that you know. Doesn't mean they always get them right. Doesn't mean, you know, if there's 1,700 controls, you might get one wrong and you get hacked anyway. So that we know this has happened, right? That's Snowden. That's Equifax. They, and an insider threat was Snowden. Sure, right. he, had, he had administrative privileges to go places. Well, he, he made an account go. and then elevated yeah. that account's privileges and then yeah. logged in as that account. So yeah. he didn't need a trace of himself. He went into another account. What a guy. Yeah, well, no one was monitoring that. There you go. You're not supposed to have privilege access that easily. That's right. And and he, they didn't follow the rules. So you, you don't follow the rules, you yeah. get breached. And that's that's right. not so, if, it's when. And so this stuff's out there. And when, when it comes to these insurance guys, and I've just I've been in some rooms with some of them and speaking with them, and they're... It's not that they're trying to scam anybody. They just haven't been doing it long enough. They're, 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 it's not a mature industry. It's not a mature offering. You know, for your automobile, how long have we had cars now? 150 years or something? I don't even know. About I mean, that's how old mine is. I don't know about well, you guys. I think 1890s, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, they, there's a lot of information about cars and safety, and, and they've, they've compiled all that. They build great actuarial tables based on age groups and where you drive and all kind, just all kinds of stuff's known about. It. But cyber for small business... There's just not enough information yet. All we know is it's all bad. So they give you this policy. It's it's very generic, <laughs> right? With with a lot of generic questions that you answer, and probably you're going to say yes because you think that's going to lower your policy, right? Instead of actually going to discover the answer internal to your organization, like, do how's my firewall really configured? No, let's stop for a what? second and ask the networking guy. Yeah. Okay. So if you're filling out a, a, a you know, a questionnaire, and you say, that they say, do you have a firewall? You say, yes. What's wrong that with that? That could mean a lot of things. What, is, what could that mean? That could mean <laughs> that, you know, you, you have the play school firewall, uh, you know, that you picked <laughs> up <Play> school firewall. <laughs> for 25 bucks on uh, yeah. you know, Craigslist or something. Uh, or it could mean that you've got uh, an enterprise level, you know, real... Cisco ASA, yeah, something or, like uh, that. In the box on a shelf. Right. Just you didn't actually room. set it up. <laughs> now, the other thing is, yeah, do you have it plugged into your network? And if so, is it actually doing any is kind of filtering? Figure, or yeah. is it just set up to let everything through? Yeah, yeah. where is it on your network? So, is it preventing everybody from going out except through the firewall or coming in through the firewall? It's yeah. supposed to be right there at that point, right, the transition point. Did you change the administrative password? 
Are you did, you, did you lock down remote access, right? You really oh, want to work oh, on yeah. it from the inside. You don't really get to it from it's the outside. It's a much, much more c a complex question than do you have a firewall. Yeah. It needs Thank to be you. a whole set of standards that the firewall needs to be configured according to. So I think we get back so to NIST. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, better. Or or I, even, I refer people, use uh, NSA has that commercial solutions for um, confidential. So mm -hmm. they have guidance for things like Palo Alto, Cisco, Fortinet, Brocade, all those, you know, your major players. And if you put in this gear, you configure it this way. In theory, you're supposed to have one of their certified companies do that to, right, to actually right. claim your, you know, NS, uh, NSA. We only have like two of those companies in the state. There's only one, I think. Referentia. Is it Referentia? Yeah. Is the only one. Yeah. Which is, and they're great. So I mean, use them if yeah. you if you really don't know, but you can you could follow that yourself and then, and get that's pretty good security. I mean, a, if you don't know what you're doing, you know, that's that's some reasonable guidance. And the goal is not to make it impenetrable because you're never going to make anything impenetrable. The goal is to make yourself such an unattractive target that they move on. That's right. Right? To have, just so many layers to get through. To have layers, exactly. Somebody so. else is more easily hacked mm -hmm. than you, so you're no longer the, the yeah, big target. If you want right? to find out, go to Shodan and just see if you're there. <laughs> Oh, Shodan, the website that tells you all the default passwords for all the devices like the firewalls yeah. and the consumer grade Wi Fi. Or you can search it for port attacks, like this port, you know, what, what, 28, port 40, you know, which ones are open out there. And this isn't even on the dark 25, web. 25, I guess. It's Shodan.io, well, is it? Yeah, people have this stuff. Yeah. If, they have, if they're sitting there exposed, right, Shodan can find it and it can see it in the middle. And, 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 and then they publish it. And there's attacks that you can, <laughs> there's you attacks that they run against that, right? So I'll be yeah. saying, oh my gosh. So if you show up on Shodan, you better make some changes. Uh, your your <laughs> firewall is not going to be in very well. Yeah. Sure. So here's my fear with the cyber <laughs> You're insurance. already owned. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, it, here's my fear with the cyber insurance, right? They ask you, do you have a firewall? And you say yes, and they give you your premium, but then you get breached. Then the questions come out that are oh, probably yeah. in the fine print in size 2 font in gray on the very last page right below the signature line where it says you must have properly configured your firewall. Yeah, and they don't ask you that question. It's usually not even there. Yeah, it's not in the fine print. I mean, it's, it's But then the, when the investigators come out to try to, to not audit pay you. you. Yeah. And say, right? well, you didn't have this firewall configured. You didn't do your so Yeah, you just asked me if I had one. I right. said, it's in the box. It's right there on the shelf. There it is. <laughs> I answered the question you legitimately. The power you yes, figure. here it is. It's a pretty box, too. I've never seen it, but it looks yeah, like an inside, expensive right? box. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, so for, but anyway, that's, it's, and I don't get the sense they're trying to, to not pay, but I, I do get the sense, and it's, they're big, big companies, right? And they really know how to do insurance well. They don't and know I cyber don't security, get the sense yeah. that they're yeah. doing, they're investigating cybersecurity, they're getting guidance, following known guidance like from NIST or whatever. And this, this is what irks me because we can't all. They need to call us. We can stay vague. <laughs> we can talk and, and we can talk about stuff like it's not solvable. But, but when we know what to do, yeah. then we're just being ignorant when we don't. Uh, address it it's properly, you know, because we need to talk in the language of mm -hmm. controls. I think that's right. that's a common language that works across ISACA, NIST, and whatever. And there's all kinds all those, of agencies. All those Australia 35 doesn't matter where you go. They there's cross indexes mm -hmm. for all that. So We're going to wrap it up. We're to out of time. There. What? I know we could talk about this forever. I thought it was fast. I didn't mean to rant. Woo! It's fast. Uh, so uh, I think the point is, AIG travelers, everybody, call us. Because we know what we're doing. Apparently, you don't. So Ooh. thank you so much for watching the show. And remember, stay safe.